Dear organizing committee, dear participants, I'm greeting you from Baku, Azerbaijan. I believe this conference will be beneficial for all of us in terms of sharing our knowledge and experiences in the field. My name is Bafa Mamadova. Currently, I'm a PhD candidate at Baku State University on program of library and information studies. At the same time, I'm working as a senior librarian at other university library in Baku. Modern librarianship and library environment encompasses a wide range of technical and technological novelties, as well as new tools and techniques to facilitate the labor and tasks of librarians and information professionals. The types and scope of the rendered information services have also been evolved and multiplied in concert with the requirements of the current information era. Current presentation defines the roles of academic libraries and librarians as creators and designers of services and offers designing methods and tools to make these tasks more facilitated for library professionals. At first, I would like um, to take a look at uh, what design thinking is. There are different definitions of design thinking Design thinking is about making things better and creating a catalyst for innovation. Design thinking is ideally suited to endeavors such as uh, that require moving from concepts to real tangible outcomes. Seeing, thinking and doing things differently from before defines the design as the different way of thinking. The basic elements at the core of design thinking are the ability to put oneself in the place of the user of the product or service, a willingness to thoughtfully and creatively move through a series of gradual changes to arrive at an optimal experience for the user, a commitment to both formative and summative evaluation to improve the performance of that product or service to ensure a good library or learning experience for the user. Design thinking is a process by which academic librarians examine their services and resources to identify ways in which these can be improved and enhanced to reduce barriers to access for students and faculty. Design thinking allows to identify the motivations, problems and needs of members of the community and of networks, identify the interests of important stakeholders, support the community and its members in designing new services and products, test solutions together with users and evaluate their benefits for addressing the problems faced by the community. Generally, for their ease of use by people who are not experts in the field and for their substantial visualization techniques and an ability to reinforce conversations within teams with diverse backgrounds, six most effective design thinking methods are suggested. First of them is personas, represent a character with which client and design teams can engage and use efficiently in the design process. Personas can be used during the emphasizing and or defining phases of design thinking. The next is stakeholder map. A stakeholder approach reflects the human and business perspective of design thinking. Stakeholder map is a visual or physical representation of the various groups involved in a particular product or service, such as customers, users, partners, organizations, companies, and other stakeholders. The next one is customer journey map. Describes a collection of touch points from the beginning to the end of this service delivery as seen from the customer's point of view. It helps the identification of chances for service innovation and problem areas for service improvement. Service blueprint showed the actions between customers and service providers during a service delivery. It's a process oriented method for the business and technical perspective of design thinking. Business model innovation is about exploring market opportunities. The challenge is to define what the business model actually entails. 
Generally, it describes the business logic of an idea, product, or service in a simple and visual representation. The last one is rapid prototyping, which is a quickly generating visual and experiential demonstration of concepts to determine which solutions are technologically possible. Considering its wide range impact, the design thinking process can be implemented to solve various kinds of library challenges, including programs, spaces, products and services, and as well as systems. User-centered services, which are one of the main objectives of any type of library and information institution, include three different levels. Passive and reactive levels of services are mostly comprised with traditional and modern library and information services such as circulation and renewal of books and other physical library materials, reference and information services, and etc. While a certain level of service is counted for the future. In this regard, design thinking methods and tools are necessary instruments in terms of development of a certain level of service by redesigning the existing services or creating new ones to better meet the needs of an academic community. Analysis can be provided in academic libraries to identify learning gaps and how this learning problem might reveal itself in an academic library setting. Students in a specific disciplinary area or source persistently producing poor papers, college seniors who are unfamiliar with reliable sources, distance learning students unable to take advantage of the on-site information literacy sessions, faculty who are willing to broadly integrate information literacy skills into their courses, and last but not the least, library staff or student workers who are required to adopt a new technology in order to deliver high quality information services at library service points. The challenges that the libraries commonly face can be put as how might we questions, and there may be different possible answers and solutions to each of them. For example, how might we questions related to digital landscape, to libraries, a space, to library metrics, to learning problems, to library online services in general and during the pandemic situation and other situations. Core research methods in any design project include different types of interviews, experiences, and observation, while additional research methods are comprised with personal diaries, photo essays, journey maps, card sorts, etc. Planning the research is creating different types of assistive materials while documenting your research by capturing what you see, which is helpful for the next phases. Sharing stories is also important in terms of highlighting rich areas of opportunity, since some teams may have divided up when conducting research, while others do all of the research together. Identifying patterns is likely the starting point for things, which go hand in hand with the insights that will drive the design. Creating the instructional project and planning for the launch encompasses prototyping, creating, building, formative evaluation and revision phases and diffusion, training, resource allocation and budget parts respectively. For a successful implementation in an academic setting, creating the right conditions is crucial. For example, getting approvals and support from faculty and administrators, persuading them, ensuring that support structures necessary for the instruction product are set, making sure that any additional resources are at hand, determining the list of librarians and faculty members and provide appropriate training and support for them. Meanwhile, the feedback interviews, questionnaires, surveys have huge help on defining the impact of services, design activities on user groups and community as a whole. Evaluating outcomes, measuring the effectiveness, performance, and evolution of redesigned or newly developed library information services is crucial for identifying their impact on the learning cycle. Outcome measurement helps people understand where best 
to invest their resources. It's an opportunity to assess and plan for the future. Not only target groups, but also design team members, librarians get considerable benefit from service design activities. Learning more about skills, tools, techniques required for carrying out tasks set by the strategic plan of the design team, the librarians involved in these tasks grow professionally by learning from the experts. From both library and patrons' perspectives, the impact of library services design can be evaluated as improved relationship between the library and the university community members, strengthened faculty librarian communication to integrate information literacy concepts and methods into course programs, assignments, and disciplines, successfully developed information literacy instructions improved resource searching skills and use of content by students, faculty members improved content and teaching expertise, improved learning experiences for students, improved online campus communication, and other activities. The recent global changes driven by the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic affected academic libraries as well and made them quickly adapt to requirements and conditions of the situation, which was new and unseen for libraries and other information centers. Taking advantage of opportunities of modern widely used technical and technological novelties, academic libraries and other institutions could also make changes in their daily activities, redesign their information services in order to provide high quality library services during these hard times. Main objective of the academic libraries during pandemic was to convert as many physical library services to virtual only services, such as online reference desk service, online instruction and teaching, enhance outreach services, services through library social media pages and other channels. Most of the higher education institutions across the world plan to provide fall 2020 semester online as well and continue to develop virtual programming to meet the needs of students, staff and faculty. During the times of campus closure, academic libraries developed and employed essential virtual library outreach services for orientation sessions and for addressing the university community in general. For example, Library Dean welcome video and video introduction about general library issues, online library orientation, virtual library tour, social media communication about library services, updates, events, and infographics, website promotions, and other online activities. As the situation was unseen, the libraries transited their existence to virtual, quickly using the practices of the other leading libraries and implemented generally advised methods and techniques to adapt to new reality. The real evaluation and impact of this new experience is yet to come. On the service design journey, it's necessary for a service design team to consider all aspects of the design process, foresee possible failures and unseen circumstances preventing the project to be successful. In this regard, all steps of the service design plan should be followed and obeyed without flaws, and all ideas and options emerged during the process should be taken into account for the successful solution of the issues. It would be better to try several solutions before attempting to implement the one most appropriate. Considering limitations fosters the design team to focus on the right challenges. Restrictions can also help try other creative choices that wouldn't be considered in other situations. If the project turns out to be successful, it's necessary to, talk, to start talking and writing about the project. This way, it's possible to inspire others or methodically help with implementation in another library, which is called growth and scaling in life cycle of social innovations. 
It's believed that anyone can adopt and utilize design thinking to make difference. It just takes some practice and preparation. When starting out with design thinking, development of innovative solutions should be pursued, which means either creating new ideas for existing users or restructuring existing ideas for new users. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to present you our paper, which is called Introduction of Information and Digital Literacy Workshops to the Freshman Students at Westminster International University in Tashkent. We are two people. My name is Victoria Levinskaya. I'm a Westminster University LRC manager, and I've been uh, developing this uh, workshop and uh, had an idea to organize this workshop at our LRC. Uh, my co-author is Kamola Ibrahimova, who is the head of LRC Enhancement Unit. Kamola is working for Wyatt LRC for four years and also been involved in the organization and teaching information literacy workshop. I want to tell you a couple of words about Westminster International University in Tashkent and particularly about our Learning Resource Center. Westminster International University in Tashkent is the first international university in Uzbekistan, which is working in close partnership with the University of Westminster in London. It means that we are delivering British curriculum and we are providing services which are very much similar to those services which are accepted by the students at the University of Westminster. Myself and Kamola, we had some training sessions at the uh, University of Westminster in order to make our program at LRC very much similar uh, to the programs in academic libraries at University of Westminster. Talking about University of Westminster and Westminster International University in Tashkent, I want to tell that we are um, very much unique for our educational environment in Uzbekistan. Uh, we are having um, a lot of um, modules which are taught uh, in order to support independent learning of our students. Talking about LRC, it's also a landing mark or distinguished mark of our university. We have a physical library as well as digital library, and uh, our main mm, kind of uh, way of development is digital library. Among our patrons, among our users are researchers, students, academic staff members, administrative staff members. Also, uh, we have visiting scholars coming and working in our library. And the services we are offering are also very wide and ranging uh, from just training sessions on uh, using the electronic databases to reading club sessions when we are reading and uh, discussing different fiction books and uh, it's a very popular feature of our LRC. We have information digital literacy trainings. We are providing research for support. And, uh, academic libraries worldwide are moving from printed collections to the digital collections because they have not uh, only the guarding they are not only the guarding their, uh, their collections, but they have provided a lot of different services. And uh, libraries and librarians are becoming not only the keepers, but information providers. So they are those who are guiding the students in the jungles of the information, showing them how to use, what to use, and uh, describing them what the most uh, valid information they need to use. Academic librarians are becoming teachers, lecturers, trainers, 
and uh, they are becoming part of the academic community more than a uh, community of uh, administrative staff. Information digital literacy is a set of abilities requiring individuals to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use effectively the needed information. This is a working definition which we were using during our workshop. However, if you will uh, check the literature, there you would find 50, 100, hundreds of other definitions of the information literacy. Why? Because it's one of the most important and essential skills of the 21st century. When uh, the work providers asking about the skills the student possess, information digital literacy is one of the most essential along with critical thinking, creative thinking and other 21st century skills. In terms of uh, methodology we have been using, we have uh, explored two frameworks, ACRL and SCONL. But both of those frameworks were adjusted in our workshops in terms of the module learning outcomes. ACRL is mostly uh, contains interconnected main concepts with flexible implementation, while SCONL is adjusted in terms of the skills and competencies, attitudes and behaviors. Therefore, they are matching and they can be used both for uh, information digital, uh, digital workshop uh, framework methodology. Uh, when we were looking for diagnostic assessment of the success of our and progress of our students, we have chosen Rodney Marshall, uh, Marshall's assessment instrument. Why? Because we have read some reviews and all of them were positive. What we have done? Uh, we, in the beginning of the workshop, after the first session, we assess the skill, the digital skills of our students. And we had 1,150 students for initial assessment. Then at the end, we have uh, asked the same type of questions to uh, students. And we had 920 uh, students in the end of our assessment. As a result, we found out that 98% of the students have improved and appreciated uh, the teaching experience, delivery methods, and interaction of academic librarians during the workshop. However, uh, some of them, like 5% five, five were not sure about the clarity and useful, usefulness of the content of the, uh, of the materials. But overall, we had a very positive results with 80% uh, students enhanced their informational competencies. Westminster University uh, Learning Resource Center made the first attempt among academic libraries in Uzbekistan to introduce a subject which allowed academic librarians to, to teach along with academic staff members in the same module. And according to our experience, this practice is very successful and needs to be adopted by other universities and academic libraries. Therefore, we provided following recommendation uh, to different stakeholders of Uzbekistan. Uh, to the Ministry of Higher and Secondary Education and the Ministry of Innovation Development, uh, to create a new ecosystem of higher education where all sphere of teaching and learning would be integrated and academic libraries would be included into the greater framework of higher education reforms. To change the paradigm of academic library and adapt knowledge management framework as a part of academic library responsibilities. Um, strengthen the pedagogical and presentation skills of the academic librarians through organization of different extracurricular events, such as training sessions, as face-to-face, -face, as well as digital, webinars, book clubs, etc. 
And due to corona quarantine measures, now more attention is given to online and blended modes of learning and teaching. And these modes require high information and digital literacy skills as for students as well as for academic staff members. Therefore, these kind of trainings are extremely important, especially in a uh, Nova Day situation. Hello everyone, we hope everyone is safe and healthy wherever you are. And also we would like to express our gratitude to the organizers of EALC 2020 for giving us the opportunity to present our paper and be sharing the virtual stage with all the speakers around the globe. With me is my co-author. Hello everyone, I'm Guljan Bodisenova, Expert Manager of Office of Fund Account and Cataloging, Nazarbayev University Library, Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. And yours truly, April Manabat, expert librarian, Surabaya University Library, Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. Our presentation would tackle about the mobile technologies in libraries, the benefits of mobile technologies in libraries, the overview of NU Library, and some of the available mobile technologies at NU Library, and also the NU Library Roadshow. In addition, we will be uh, discussing the objectives of the study, the methodology, the results and discussions, and the conclusions of our study. Libraries have a decent way to broaden innovative library services to users, and with the assistance of emerging mobile technologies, libraries can now provide speedier access to services with just a click away. Given the convenience provided by these mobile technologies, it is indeed empirical for libraries to not just explore the benefits of these technological innovations, but also to educate the people on how to maximize its use. And nowadays, libraries provide numerous ways to extend various library services to its clients. With the help of mobile phones, libraries can now create administrations and give speedier access to its gathering. Libraries have constantly embraced new innovations to aid their goal of giving customers powerful and opportune access to required data. This gives a, a weight on the LIS professionals or experts to thoroughly consider meeting the data needs of the clients. The improvement of portable innovations has brought about moving the scholarly condition from conver conventional to versatile learning settings. Mobile library services have changed the way traditional libraries deliver their services. These mobile services have also changed the relationship between the libraries and its clients, as well as the privacy settings. A shift from de-learning or distance learning to e-learning and from e-learning to m-learning has been observed. Libraries would also use mobile technologies in various service innovations such as M-Learning, mobile instructions, webinars, reference service, and catalog searching. Mobile technologies will be a great help in enhancing user interactions as users will be able to, ac to access a wide array of digital resources and library services in their fingertips. In addition, a number of publishers are already making their e-books accessible to users through mobile devices. Digital resources and databases such as e-journals, films, and even images are also made available through mobile applications which can be downloaded from their own mobile devices or through mobile devices lent by the libraries. The Nazarbayev University Library has been exploring these technologies for quite some time now. The libraries uses uh, advanced information technologies to make it open to, net, to the working environment for its supporters. The library traces back its humble beginnings on 2010 as an informational arm of NU that supports the research, scholarly, and informational needs of the academic community. The library collections are available in open access and as seen by techniques for RFID advancement for the opportunity to use a self-advantage corner for the stream, the two parts which amazingly increase the probability of using the library. Additionally, the computer laboratory with 250 uh, teen clients 
or PCs is arranged in the library empowering understudies to use a virtual work territory and sign into any PC. Aside from this, Wi-Fi is available in the library and around NU to make it possible for anyone to use their own specific electronic devices. Some of the available mobile technologies at any library are the e-readers, which is the Prestigio and Jetbooks, and these devices that are, can be borrowed by the students for two weeks and also allows download of free e-books, films, audiobooks, and music available online. In addition, overdrive application that allows uh, clients to borrow digital books, audiobooks, movies, and shows from your library collection using smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices are also available. With this, the librarians can recommend some of the books for reading, and also the library can provide electronic multilingual dictionaries and can be accessed with uh, multilingual uh, languages such as Kazakh, Russian, Turkish, and English, and Chinese. One of the initiatives of the NU Library is the NU Library Roadshow, which is dedicated to NU Research Day, which showcases the services and resources that supports the research activities of NU. Started in 2011, the Library Roadshow is an event that showcases the different technologies and um, collections available in the library to various exhibits and interactive activities. With this, library users are are encouraged to take part in this event and explore the different technologies in making use of them. In addition, the Library Roadshow highlights the number of researchers in their, in their performances, the most used databases, print books, and games, even the top library patrons, the thesis and dissertations, collections of print and e-resources, and various ways and approaches using the Ask a Librarian service. In addition, it also features the e-readers and also the microphone collection and equipment. It is said to be that academic libraries such as the NU Library is now putting its best effort to provide convenience to users at their fingertips. Events like the Library Roadshow provides insights on the different mobile technologies and applications available in the library. With this, the study aims to provide a short review of the distinctive mobile technologies available at the NU Library. In addition, this study intends to identify the benefits of these technologies as perceived by students during the Library Roadshow in 2018. Moreover, the study seeks to determine the possible ways to promote these mobile technologies to patrons and maximize its use. As for the part of methodology, I will be turning over this presentation to my co-author, Guljan. Thank you, April. The Nazarbayev University Library has been exploring these technologies for quite some, some time now. As mentioned April, the library collections are available in open shelves use. A self-advantage corner for the stream, the two parts which amazingly increase to the probability of using of library gathering. So the study employed uh, a descriptive approach to present uh, a review of the distinctive mobile technologies at Nazarbayev University Library. During the roadshow, librarians provide a brief description and demonstration on the use of these technologies in their library and research experiences. Academic libraries such as the Nazarbayev University Library is now putting its best effort to provide convenience to users at their fingertips. Events uh, like Library Roadshow provide insight on the different mobile applications and services available in the library. This study also aims to provide a, a short review of the distinctive uh, mobile technologies available at a new library. In addition, the, this study intends to identify the benefits of these technologies as perceived by students during the library roadshow. A random survey was conducted among the participants during the library roadshow 2018 held at the atrium at the, of the Nazarbayev University. The event showcased the different technologies available in the library. 
10 questions were asked to approximately ran random participants who got to visit the event and made use of the available mobile technologies available at the library, such as Prestige and Jetbook. The questions revolved around the use of these technologies and their perception about them. Uh, based on this perception and other observations, the researchers were able to determine possible ways to promote uh, these mobile technologies to maximize usage. Uh, this is uh, examples of our handouts, uh, booklets and bookmarks, which we distributed to the students. This paper aims to, descri to describe the available mobile technologies at Nazarbayev University Library. Since more and more services we provided by the library, which aims to help patrons in their research needs, it's their convenience. This study will provide a glimpse of these technologies and its use. The overdrive application is extraordinary and its interface is smooth, clear and genuinely natural. Users like to utilize book recordings. Book recordings have paths uh, which are not an element on some different applications and standard highlights are like rest clock and speed. Playback is smooth and uh, adjust um, across gadgets. Overdrive is an uh, online platform that provides the best reading experience for uh, downloading eBooks. Uh, since uh, 2017, Nazarbayev University Library uses Overdrive application, which allows users to download 15 books at a time for 21 days. Uh, there are no renewals, however, but users will need to check the books out again and once it has expired. It has quite a separate borrowing system as compared to borrowing print materials or other platforms such as EBSCO and ProQuest. Based on this, on the survey conducted, it was found uh, that not participants, uh, all of participants knew how to make use of these available, available technologies available at Nazarbayev University Library. A random survey was also conducted among uh, librarians to provide researchers the basic knowledge on how to libraries offer mobile access as a service, uh, their succeeding mobile implementation plan, and their perception on the use of these technologies to patrons. The result of the random survey gave the researchers some understanding on the perception of Nazarbayev students on the use of mobile devices for various library services. Few students use readers from the library with 3.2%, uh, while 7.4% indicated the daily use of their own ebook readers. Uh, we also took advantage uh, of the students' library mobile access demands on awareness. Taking into account the survey results, the library will have an idea and de on developing more mobile library services in response to the needs of students. The researcher also checked the number of e-readers users for the past five years. As presented on the chat, uh, 2017 got the highest users with uh, 217 users, while uh, 2018 got the lowest number of the users with 144 borrowers. Students were also asked on their borrowing duration of various handheld devices we decided to focus on access rather than ownership to accommodate various instances. Response shows that 69.3% uh, of our students use an e-readers for two weeks, while 21% of students use the devices for almost a month. The library uses uh, advanced information technologies to make it open or to the working environment for its supporters. The need for acquisition of skills on the use uh, of mobile technologies raised awareness for the library staff. Libraries are putting their best foot forward in promoting their services through, through mobile devices. Creating tailor fit library services to various clients is indeed a challenging task, but nonetheless an opportunity to improve library services. It's no doubt that library used several tools and technicals to disseminate information to the to the community. Mobile technology has become became boom at the, to the library. The application of mobile technology in library services is very much needed. Promoting these technologies through exhibits and events like library roadshow, 
gamification and others uh, will be a great help in increasing and maximize its usage. Based on the study, there were a number of mobile technologies available for use for the library patterns, such as Overdrive and Prestige, among others. In addition, academic libraries are encouraged to give convenient access to applicable data keeping, and in mind, the end goal to address the issues and analyzes. Promotion of libraries should be also be considered. For this purpose, the use of uh, the technologies is very essential. With the emergence of technology, libraries can make use of various tools and techniques to disseminate information. The marketing and promotion of these services to maximize its use is very much. The use of technology as a tool in delivering services to patrons uh, is essential to provide e efficiency and convenience without sacrificing the quality of services. Also, it should be noted that the proper work with an electronic device requires the librarian's instruction and development of student skills in working with the information available on the references website and applications. In conclusion, it must be said that the use of mobile technologies at the library complying with contemporary requirements of the pandemic situation. It's also a perspective trend. This is just our references. Uh, thank you for, your, for listening. If you have questions, please send us just a mail.